The equities market and the bond market are telling you different narratives going into the, to the close of the year. I mean, the 10-year yield um, and, and the two-year yield, the degree of inversion, and then you take a look at the PEs on the S&P 500, which are, what, about 18 or so on a forward basis. I mean, they're still relatively high and holding up. What, what is the narrative you believe it at this point? Yeah, good morning, Melissa. It, it sure is confusing. The, the two sides are, as you said, completely split. So if we, you know, look at the um, fixed income government side of the picture, a big recession or at least a notable recession is coming. If we look at equities, you know, I think that it looks like perhaps we're going to get that soft landing or a slight recession. You know, I, I think that there's there are so many factors that are coming into play. Um, it, it feels like sort of daily, whether it's shutdowns on COVID, um, geopolitics, oil and gas. So there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, and it's sort of hard to call it in terms of what's going to happen. But my suspicion on a couple of things is that, you know, globally, central bankers are, are just committed to the idea of battling inflation. They're raising rates, so they're slowing things down. On the other hand, though, um, you do have wage growth, so you have a consumer that can continue to spend. You do have inflation that is likely peaked. You see some things coming down, like durables, price of gas, um, rental cars, things like that. So that helps the Fed's picture. But really, jobs is the main issue. Jobs are too hot. You know, you have two jobs for every person who's unemployed. And I think that until that starts to ease, we're going to be in this short-term period of uncertainty. But, you know, I think with markets like this, there, there are still a few things to do. And one of those things is to have a disciplined strategy of dollar cost averaging in over time and playing the long game here. I think in the short term, it's a little bit too hard to call it. Dollar cost averaging into what sorts of stocks? I mean, you can go strictly defensive, like a utilities. Utilities are, are pretty expensive right now. Um, compared to its own historical PEs. I mean, we're just off of 52-week highs on the utility index. So where do you go for, for safety? Because you're going to pay for it if you want to go to those traditional safe havens. Yeah, um, and, and that's a great point. So I think that in terms of longer term, so I'm saying post 2023, you know, maybe we get that year end rally, maybe we get that, you know, kind of classic 16% jump in an election year. But I'm looking at the old tech generals, the Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google. I just think that the story for automation remains strong. Look at the job situation, right? I think a lot of companies will continue to invest in technology to replace what they can't find in a person with a robot. I think you need it for EV. I think you need it for 5G. You need it for cloud, cybersecurity, you know, we're going to automate our way into the future and, and that's going to play out over time. So I don't mind holding Apple for a decade. You know, I don't think most people do. You can always look for those opportunities if you have cash on the side. Um, to your point, utilities are expensive if you want to diversify. Healthcare is maybe expensive, but it pays you a dividend along the way off of all time highs. You can look at Merck's, United Healthcare's and CVS's mm -hmm. to diversify your portfolio and get paid along the way. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.